Hello, welcome to a new series. This is going to be a walk down memory lane for me and a chance to study the design of some very old games and see how well they hold up. The first computer in my household when I was a kid was the Apple IIe. My childhood was characterized by many hours of playing games, writing basic programs to print lines of text, and fighting with siblings for computer time. This computer set the entire course of my life in motion. I wouldn't be the person I am today without it. The Macintosh also played a big role, but the Apple II is where it all started. The plan for this series is to revisit the earliest games of my childhood and see them through a modern lens. A lot of the games are very small, so this series may take a different form from, than my usual one. I'll be playing it by ear and adjusting as necessary. Some technical notes. I'm using the KEGS32 emulator with some modifications to fix joystick support. It's open source and easily hackable. I'll put some relevant links in the video description in case you want to try it for yourself. Anyway, that's the intro. Let's move on and play the first game. Today's game is going to be Conan Hall of Volta. It's an action-adventure sort of thing with seven levels, each taking place on a single screen. It's a pretty good time. It's kind of hard, a little bit punishing. You don't get a lot of extra lives, so there may be a restart here and there, but it shouldn't be too bad to get it done. It's made in 1984. It's as old as me. So, um, I'm on the boot disc right now. The common thing, a common thing among games of this era was that you'd boot off one disc, then change to another, which I will do with a little bit of emulator magic here. So I've changed to a different disc. Press any key to continue. And the rest of the game loads. Old software is very finicky. Let's see if it decides to behave this time. Hey, it's actually doing it right. <laughs> this is about the seventh attempt to record this. Every other time that I would do it, uh, it would act like a whole bunch of inputs were happening at once. Skip past this intro, go straight to the game, and I wouldn't actually have control of it. But I think I figured out what I was doing wrong. All right, so that thing plays twice. Then a moment later, it'll show you just a little bit of stuff about the game. High score, zero. I have not played in this, uh, in this emulator yet. Conan, Hall of Volta. Destroy Volta. Beware of his minions and other dangers which lie ahead. Use gems and keys to your advantage. So you get three lives at the start. Um, swords are your main weapon. You can throw them. They act kind of like boomerangs for some reason. And come back. Start with ten. You can get more. You can lose them. Conan, the Barbarian. Main character. Volta, the villain. And the avian ally. So this game hints at some sort of story. I don't have access to the manual, so I can't get any more details about it if they ever existed. Alright, there's the items. Let's get started. Keys open doors, gems go in gem holders, and do various things. Level 1. So, right, verbs are move left, move right, climb up, climb down, jump, and throw a sword. So if you catch the sword, you get it back. If you move back, it'll sort of go down to the floor and you won't get it back. So I'm down to nine swords now. This bird is the only threat in this level. You can kill it if you do it just right from here. Okay, I did it. Or you can just avoid it and move on. So arrow in the upper left tells you where to go. Just get to it, and level ends. Level 2. This one's also pretty simple. There's a little bit of platforming through trees. Uh, it introduces the key mechanic, so I gotta pick up this key here, which is embedded into the side of the castle for some reason. Uh, that bird over there on the left is the avian ally. I can't actually interact with him here. But he's just sort of there to show me that he's around. Don't fall in those spikes, of course. Level 3. Not all of the levels are that short. First two just kind of giveaways, but here I have to actually do some stuff. So there's a gem holder there, sort of left center. Scorpion's in the way of getting to it. Avian ally up, the t up at the top. If I touch him, I can get an extra life. 
those two ants there, I assume they're ants, uh, are the main threat in this level. So don't let them touch you. They sort of run around randomly. Two doors appear. One at the top, one at the bottom. Each one teleports you to the other location. What I'm waiting for here is a door to appear at the bottom without ants around too much. Oop, that's a death. Those things move very erratically, so even if you try to jump over them, it won't always actually work in your advantage. So eventually, door at the top will appear, ants will go away, and I'll be able to get in safely. <laughs> Just gotta wait for the RNG. If I can get the gem up there and take it to the gem holder, then something will happen and I'll be able to complete the level. There we go. Got the gem. Wait for the bird. Extra life. Now if these will behave, I can get out of here safely. Cool. Alright, extra life makes up for the one I lost. I'm probably going to need that life though. Anyway, so set the gem. A bubble appears out of the lava for some reason. And if I write it upward, I can get to safety over here. The longer you ride the bubble, the more points you get. So it's advantageous, if you're going for a high score for some reason, to ride it all the way to the top before it pops in the stalactite up there. I chose to take the safe route and just go. So level 4 is kind of a strange one. Um, items spawn at random, so do enemies, uh, across these six platforms. What I'm trying to do is to collect two gems and put them in the gem holders in the lower right and that will give me a key to open the door to the next level. This is also handy for just getting some extra swords in case I... Eh. Okay, that was dangerous, in case I run low later. Alright, got a gem. You can kill those things not when they're on the ground. They have to jump when your sword is in front of them. Okay, one gem set. Gotta wait for another to spawn. There's some way to throw the sword perfectly so that it kills the thing and comes back. You have to be at just the right distance, I think. Uh, the one I threw there was used up when it hit the enemy. Ooh. There, that one came back. Alright, second gem. Now, there's a trick you can pull here. You can actually get three gems in here if you keep waiting. And uh, that would come, hand come in handy on the, on the next level. I'm going to choose not to do that because uh, that would that would let me skip a part of the next level, but I don't want to do that. Whoops. Oh, okay, I'm alive. <laughs> Down to one extra life now. Okay, he left. Good, good. I can leave, I think. Cool. Level five. So that pile of gems down there can be skipped if you carry one from the previous level, but I need to actually get a gem now. So dragons move back and forth uh, in between those teleporters, and you have to kill all the dragons. Uh-oh. Movement is weird. You have to... You'll start out walking. You have to move for a little while to get up to running speed, and if you walk when you try to do platforming... Oops. It won't go very far. Okay, well, that's a game over. <laughs> uh, there's a random game over screen that shows up each time. We might see a bunch of those. All right, let me get back to level five again. All right, back to level five again. I didn't actually do any better, so I have the same number of lives. Um, one trick with this level is that each dragon you kill eliminates one of the gems down below, so you have to go down here before you've killed all the dragons you need one of those gems. I think dying actually returns a gem to the pile. So let's see, I have to get a gem. If this flame will cooperate. I have to get a gem, then get back. Oh wait, they're disappearing now. What's causing that? So each dragon that spawns uses a gem, I think? That must be it. You get a lot of slowdown here when uh, all the dragons are spawned. I'll get back up there and kill some of them. Try to alleviate that. Got a good flame pattern. Go up. I just need to do this in some way that won't kill me. No, that was not it. Okay, well. I do get to keep my gem. That's good. Alright. So if I can just make it through here. 
Maybe I'll be okay. <laughs> this is way too slow with all these dragons here. Maybe I should just, yeah, I think from now on, now that I've gotten that gem once, I'll do the, um, this is a fairly safe spot to stand. So you want to do that to kill a dragon just as it comes through the teleporter. I could go up here. I think it's a lot less safe, though. Dragon fire stops your swords. Oh, and it's faster than me. Man. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to get back there. I'll take a gem from the previous, uh previous level instead, just to save a little bit of trouble, because I'm apparently having some trouble. You restart at the beginning when you die, by the way, just so you know. So, redo all levels, I'll be back. Okay, made it to level 5 again, with two extra lives and a gem, so I can skip the whole bottom section. So I'm going to take a very careful approach to the dragons. I'm just going to stay down here until they're all dead. You'll know they're all dead when the, let's see, when the gems are gone, I guess? So I guess there are three more that still have yet to spawn. Two more. This is a game where it pays to go slowly and be very careful because you do not get a lot of ex uh, opportunities for an extra life. I think that one in level three might be the only one. Alright, so one more dragon, I think? Maybe? Or is the last gem supposed to stay there for me? Nope, one more dragon. Yeah, so this would be kind of crazy to figure out for the first time. Like, uh, your, your gems just disappear. How would you know to go down there and, well, I guess you'd see the gem holder, see them disappearing, and know you had to go there to get them? When I go through that teleporter, it deactivates and the fire gets bigger for some reason. Gem deactivates the... Uh, collisions are a little weird. Deactivates the zappy thing, can get the key, and leave. The platforming in this game is not what I would call great. For some reason, you collide with the gem going up if it's in the gem holder. Okay, level 6. This one is pretty involved. So let's see, you have all these ladders all over the place. The globe in the middle. That eyeball... You need to repeatedly kill the eyeball in order to lengthen this ladder up here. So you can get up to the top and... Let's see, I think you drop a chandelier on the globe. I'm calling that a globe, it's just, I'm just saying that because it's spherical. I don't know what it actually is supposed to be. Let's see, those two pads will zap you if you're standing there when they, uh, um, ah. <laughs> Alright, died to the eyeball. There are a couple of safe places to stand. I think down here is one of the safest. Of course, those sparks are coming at me. Eyeballs move around randomly. I need to, I need to kill those things. So that's, that's the only way to make progress here. But there's just no safe place to stand to do it. Alright, what are you going to do? You go that way... Can I get a kill, maybe? Nope. Everything's all slow, because there's too many things on the screen. Alright, is he going to come back this way? Is he going to come back this way at a level I can kill him? No. Uncooperative. I don't know if I want to go up here or stay down there. Okay, I wanted to go up here. Got him. Good. Okay, so that's one. Please stay away from me, Spark. Please stay away from me, Spark. Uh, I want to go up there. That's slightly safer, maybe. I think my chosen safe spot was usually where that Spark is there over on the left. Sure doesn't look safe right now, though. Okay, got another one. Good. See, so you can see the ladder getting longer each time I do that. Can I... no. Maybe from here? Yes. I think there's a few different eyeball patterns, and it's random which it chooses when it comes down. Uh, okay, you're gonna go over there. Alright, as long as that spark stays away from me, I think I'm good. So just two more. Seems to be minding its own business over there on the le on the left. Uh, uh, okay. One more eyeball. Got it! Great! Now from here, what you have to do is throw a sword. Throw a sword slightly to the right. 
There we go. Cool. All power deactivated, and I can get into level 7. The final level. There's Volta. Has my avian ally in a cage. And let's see, what do I do here? I don't actually remember this level as well as the others, because I haven't gotten to it as frequently. So there's some kind of crazy elevator there. Let's see. So that, right, that spark has a gem inside it. I shoot the spark, get the gem, and set it over there on the left. That's what it is. The purple sparks don't have gems. Now, there's a pattern to them. You just have to sort of know where they're going to go and don't be where they will be. Good. Or do be where they will be if, you, if it's a gem one. Now, can I get down there? Oh, that, is that going to come up here? No. All right, stay where you are. That's a purple one. Actually, this is probably the safest... Oh, that spark let out some mosquitoes? Can I kill them? Do I want to just avoid them? They seem to be moving in a pattern. I killed it. Okay. I need the green sparks. Those are the ones that... Maybe I can kill the purple ones to stop the mosquitoes from being let out? Or maybe it's just a particular pattern? I'm not sure. You'd think I'd know with as much as I played this game when I was younger. All right, third gem. I might... Uh-oh. Okay, sparks can bounce around there. That's good to know. Let's hope this one doesn't decide to... All right, I win. Don't drop me in the lava, please. Thank you. Thus, Volta was destroyed, and Conan continued in search of high adventure. Cool. I did not expect to one-shot levels 6 and 7. Alright, bonus for two extra lives. Great! I win! Is that all to the ending, or is there any more? Okay, pressing enter just restarts the game. Alright, so that's Conan, Hall of Volta. Fun little game. Um... <laughs> Sure took me a long time to complete it when I was younger. I think I think level 6 was my biggest stumbling block then. Uh, yeah, I remember it was like... Uh, time kind of distorts in memory. I would say it was years before I actually saw level 7. That's probably not true. Though I was pretty young when I was playing it, so it might have been the sort of thing where I just played it with it a little bit, couldn't get through it, gave up, and tried again much later. Anyway, so... Um, Sure, so to look at this through a sort of modern game design lens. I really like the way that each level is unique and kind of has its own backgrounded character to it. Um, this is obviously a lot shorter than a game you would usually see these days, but then again, it's a fine length. Like, it's, it's the length that it needs to be. Uh, the controls <laughs> obviously would be refined a whole lot. They're, I'm sure most of the limitations were technical. It uses the color palette really well. Like, things things look good in the, the Apple II four colors plus black and white, or whatever it gives you, uh, palette. Yeah, and, like, the, the core level design with better controls would be fine. The random enemy patterns aren't great, because you just... It's, it's a fair bit of trial and error. But anyway, I think this one holds up pretty well these days. I still had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, lives are very stingy. It's... Punishing if you game over, you have to start over, but it's pretty quick, so it's not too bad to get back to where you are. Anyway, I had fun playing this one, and I look forward to seeing you when I play a different game.